in dynamics problems it is convenient to replace the given distributed non uniform rigid body by two separate concentrated masses placed at distant apart in dynamics force analysis determining the inertia force of the connecting rod is not that easy after all connecting rod is having distributed mass and also the motion is not uniform therefore we need some theoretical concept in order to determine inertia torque acting on the connecting rod that concept is what known as dynamically equivalent system in which we are going to replace the distributed mass connecting rod by two concentrated masses interesting isn't it so let's get started hello everyone it's me dr v jack ma welcoming you to my channel i am making lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students if this is your first time not yet subscribed please press the the subscribe and also the bell icon so that you get notified all my forthcoming videos so it is always better to follow the concept from the beginning so that to have continuity in the learning so i have given the links of all my previous videos okay this is the learning outcome after watching this video till the end you should be able to understand the situation in which we need to apply the concept of dynamically equivalent system you will be able to list the various conditions for dynamically equivalent system and also derive equations for them finally you will be able to apply the concept of dynamically equivalent system for a connecting rod so far we are dealing with hinging force analysis problems technically they can be broadly classified into two types static force analysis and dynamic force analysis for our simplicity we divide those problems under two category in first category we have not considered the weight of the connecting rod those problems can be solved by both analytical and graphical methods this is what we have seen so far in our previous videos we have the second category the more accurate one which is nothing but dynamic force analysis of ic engine considering the weight and inertia effect of the connecting rod this also can be solved by both analytical and graphical method wherever the connecting rod comes into picture there we need the concept of dynamically equivalent system you know that the two important parts of an ic engine are piston and connecting rod piston has linear motion to and fro motion translation motion for which it is easy to determine inertia force of the piston unlike piston connecting rod has distributed mass and motion also not linear this is a non linear motion so it is not translation in fact it is a general plane motion combination of rotation and translation in such cases it is difficult to determine inertia torque acting on the connecting rod directly so we need one additional concept to do that that additional concept is dynamically equivalent system is it clear what is dynamically equivalent system when we are having a distributed non uniform rigid body we are going to replace that mass by two concentrated masses placed at a fixed distance apart let us take this as a rigid body which has a mass m length l as you could see there this is a distributed mass non uniform rigid body in this case the total mass m of the rigid body can be replaced by two concentrated masses as you could see m1 and m2 this concept is what known as dynamically equivalent system just to give the same logic for a connecting rod as you can see the connecting rod is a distributed mass 
In this case, we can replace mass of the connecting rod by two concentrated masses, say M1 and M2, right? How to replace it? What is the logic? So I have actual rigid body. I have dynamically equivalent system. When can I say both are equivalent? Only when both should have same motion. In this case, the rigid body connecting rod will have linear motion as well as angular motion. So we can say that both are equivalent only when both will have same linear acceleration as well as angular acceleration. That is the logic. Using that logic, we are going to derive conditions. Now, we are going to see conditions of a dynamically equivalent system and few expressions we are going to derive. This is the distributed mass system having mass m, length l, g, center of gravity, of the given rigid body. Linear acceleration of old system must be equal to linear acceleration of the new system. I mean to say, say this is actually old, this is what I need to find new. Okay, so this is the logic. Your force will be acting on a connecting rod, on a rigid body, isn't it or not? Yes. So let me call that force value as F. Let the perpendicular distance between the applied force and the center of gravity of the rigid body be D. Okay. For old system, I can write F is equal to M into A. The external applied force will be same on both old system and the new system because that is not in my control. We are not changing it. So, when can we say both will have same acceleration, force being constant? So, I can write here, in this case, we have two separate masses. So, what is the total mass? M1 plus M2. Now, you tell me when both these can be equal, both can have same acceleration when actual mass of the old system must be equal to sum of the two concentrated masses. If this condition is satisfied, we could say acceleration of both these systems are same. This M equal to M1 plus M2 is the condition number one. What is the second condition? So we have said it both should have same linear acceleration and also angular acceleration. So I could write here this condition to be satisfied, right? Let the mass moment of inertia of the old system is I. We know that the torque is equal to force multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the moment center and the line of action of the force. In this case, small d. So F into d is the formula to find the torque. But we have another formula for torque if you know mass moment of inertia and angular acceleration of the body, which is equal to I alpha. So I'm equating them. I want to find from here angular acceleration. This is the formula. The same way I have written angular acceleration for your new body. What about the force for the old and new system? Same or uh, different? Same. So we can't change this. What about the distance? This also must be the same. So the distance must be same. Then only we can get the same numerator value. When can we say the D value, the distance between force and the CG remains same for both these systems? Only when the CG point remains same for both old and new system. That is the point there. That concept can be written mathematically like this. M1 L1 must be equal to M2 L2. When this moment is equal, then we can say the G remains in the same point. It does not move here and there. This mathematical equation will take care of that. So by using the logic that D must be the same, we got the second condition. We are talking about angular acceleration must be same. For that, both systems should have numerator and denominator values should be the same. So now we have completed the numerator part by using which we got the second condition. 
Now we need to ensure that the denominator also must be same. From this logic, I can write mass moment of inertia of the old system must be equal to mass moment of inertia of the new system. Then we can say the denominator also equal. Clear? Or in other words, I could write I mass moment of inertia of the given rigid body must be equal to mass moment of inertia of mass 1 plus mass moment of inertia of mass 2. Since I know the mass and distance, I can very well find here mk square is equal to m1 l1 square plus m2 l2 square. So totally how many equations we have got? Three expressions we have got. So shall we summarize all the three conditions? Yes. Fine. So we got the three conditions. What's our aim? To find the new system. My aim is to find M1, M2 and also the distance L1 and L2. So now what I am going to do, I am going to simplify these conditions 1, 2, 3 so that to obtain some useful formula for us. Are you ready? From equation number 2, I can write like this. This I will substitute in equation 1. We will get like this. So I would like to simplify this. From this, I can write, am I right? Yes. Same way, I can get equation for M2. I will be getting this. So now, I got equations A and B. Now we got the equations for M1 and M2. Substitute them in equation 3. So on simplification what I will get? So from this I got the very important equation. It says that this L1 multiplied by L2 should be equal to K square value. So shall we do the summary of conditions for dynamically equivalent system? Yes. So please understand that if first two conditions are satisfied, we can call that as a statically equivalent system. That means it will not have angular acceleration. So in order to be a dynamically equivalent system, all three must be considered. Uh, please remember, we need to find mass 1, mass 2 and L1 and N2. So you should not be determining these values only by using first two equations then your answer will be wrong. So in order to ensure that the third condition is satisfied, we must use k square equal to L1 into L2 first. Otherwise, this will not be a dynamically equivalent system. That might become a statically equivalent system. In the dynamic force analysis of the connecting rod, we are exactly going to use this technique. So we will be having this mass M, which will be replaced by two masses, m1 and m2. So we can find the values of l1, l2, m1, n2 by using this equation. Please understand that l1 plus l2 is not equal to length of the connecting rod. Now we shall solve a numerical problem on dynamically equivalent system of a connecting rod. Are you ready? Yes. Let us read the problem and let me write the given data directly on that. Connecting rod length is given, L is given here, between centers, small end and bigger end, and as a mass of 4 kg, so mass of the connecting rod is given 4 kg. The center of gravity is 250 mm from small end. If you remember the diagram, we called that one as small L1. And the radius of gyration about an axis through which center of gravity perpendicular to the plane of motion is 120 mm. That means they are given radius of gyration of the connecting rod. Now they have asked us to determine dynamically equivalent system. What do you mean by the dynamically equivalent system? We are going to replace the mass by two concentrated masses M1 and M2 and also we need to know the locations L1 and L2. That is the meaning of dynamically equivalent system. Having one mass at the center of small end, so they have given position of one mass. 
So I know the one answer, L1. So I need to find the remaining one. Right. So all the given data are listed again. What are the required data? Right. Shall we go to the solution? Yes, we already have three equations. We are going to just apply them. We'll get the answer. Fine. I have said which equation we have to compulsorily use it. The third expression. So let me start my solution from third equation onwards. From this, I could write in this equation, K is given, L1 is given. We can find L2 directly. By substitution, we got the value of L2. Let us go for M1. So by just, we are getting 0.749 kilogram as my answer. M2, I'm getting this as 3.25 kg. There you are. We have solved the problem. We got all the rected answer. Please understand here, the L1 is given 250 mm. The L2, what we found it is about 57.6 mm. Put together, we will not get actual length. So L1 plus L2 will not be equal to L. Is that clear? So it will be, the M2 will be placed not exactly at the bigger end, it will be placed some mm inside the bigger end. That's it about the problem. As always, I have given you a problem for practice for you. Please do it at home, check your answer. But here, they have not given radius of gyration of the connecting rod directly. Instead, they have given the time period. Shall I give you the hint? This is the hint for you. So time period will be given in your problem. Distance between point of oscillation to the center of gravity of the connecting rod is H. That also will be given from this find K. Cortex. In our next video, we are going to extend this concept to an important topic, namely correction couple. Hope you understood the concept clearly now. If so, like the video, share to your friends and subscribe my channel. See you in my next video. Take care. Bye. Thank you.